Uh, let's, uh, let's get the guitar involved. Now, <clears throat> Dan, I'd like you just for a minute, just to go ahead and comp full board just like Sam was. Okay. Okay, rhythmically and harmonically, you're active. Yeah. Just with, with the group. Two. Now, one, two, three. <laughs> See, some rhythm sections only have a guitar. Some rhythm sections only have a piano. But the problem that we have is they're both the same role. They both do the same thing. They're both comping the same way. This causes a lot of trouble if they're both comping full bore. Because now we're stepping on each other harmonically and we're stepping on each other rhythmically. So let's do that. Okay, we're deliberately demonstrating that. It seems like you could be slightly louder still. Come up just a little bit more. Yeah. And uh, let's see what happens when we You don't hear that set of guitars very often. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing we're recording. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, they're both comping full board. Two, and one, two, three, and. <laughs> <laughs> you see the problem with that. <laughs> it gets really cluttered and over busy in the texture. And so what do we do about this? And this is a big question in the public schools on how to handle this. You know, how do we deal with it? You know how it's handled in the real world is a lot of times we just don't play at the same time as each other. Uh, years ago, I had Michael Brecker with my band. And we were in the middle of the rehearsal when he just stopped the he was in his solo and he stopped. He stopped the whole band. He turned and he said, please, only one comping instrument behind me at a time. <laughs> All right, let's go again. <laughs> it was only a, a, about two, three months later. I don't know. I think it was like the difference between March and June or something like that. But uh, Brecker's group came and played at the uh, Salt Lake Arts Festival. And he had Joy, Joy Calderazzo on the piano. Anybody see him with uh, Branford Marcellus when he was here? When, when Bramford was here, it was Joy that was playing piano. And when it was with Kurt Ellingham, so, yeah. And so he had Joy Calderazzo playing piano, and he had Mike Stern playing guitar. This is a major name in the guitar world, Mike Stern. And it was interesting to watch because they pretty much never played at the same time as each other. You'd see the piano comping for a while, and Mike would just be sitting there. And then guitar comp for a while, and the piano, Joy would just be sitting there. <laughs> and that's often how it's handled. When you just lay out and you don't play, we call that strolling. And sometimes it's like, stroll for a little bit here, you know. <laughs> but <clears throat> that may not be a realistic uh, uh, solution in the school because if the kid's sitting there doing nothing, you got classroom discipline problems sometimes. <laughs> you want to keep people doing something, you know. <laughs> uh, and it's also, this is also valid and viable in the real world as well, that we could decide that one of us is the active comper and one of us is the passive comper. Because we don't want to both be active at the same time. I think you'd have a really hard time finding any kind of a recording where the piano and guitar are both harmonically and rhythmically active at the same time. But what we might do is say, okay, Sam, at the moment you're the active comper. That means he can feel free to do more harmonic interest and more rhythmic interest. And Dan, you're the secondary comper at this moment. And so Dan needs to play a very simple, longer note, things, not so much rhythm. He might listen for a little hole that Sam leaves and he might throw in something here and there. And if they've been playing together for a while, then you got a better way of kind of anticipating that. Oh, shoot. Yeah. My watch. <laughs> if I do something too dramatic, it'll say, looks like you've fallen. <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't call the emergency. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, Dan, you take the secondary role where you're going to play simple harmonies, maybe even just shell technique. What we call shell technique is when he's only playing the thirds and sevenths of the chords. 
He doesn't get into playing any altered notes on the dominance or anything like that, which might be conflicting with what Sam might be thinking about altered notes on the dominance. Instead, he's just playing very simple harmonic, and maybe he just plays root third and seventh. But he's just going to keep it simple harmonically, and he's going to be more long note, non rhythmic kind of things, okay? Two, one, two, three. <laughs> You're never going to switch. We're going to switch. You're the passive copper. Okay. See, it would be common we could trade roles at a certain point. We have to have. We either have to have some eye contact, which I prefer. This is we're going to set them in a place where I can't put the piano like I'd like. But I would like the piano over here, where you're sitting this way, facing that way, and dance here, and you can have some eye contact. And there's a little body language that can happen, and we can say, "All right, you got it," <laughs> or whatever. Uh, but it's going to also pre be predecided, where you can decide. Okay, uh, when we get to the saxophone solo, piano is the active comper. When we move to the trombone solo, the guitar is going to be the active, active comper, etc. You can do things like that that are, that are creative. And that way we don't get all that mess that we have when it's too busy. Now, there's another answer we could do. This tends to only be valid on swing tunes. And by the way, uh, when we get to the Latin tunes, like bossa nova or, or uh, maybe a funk tune, a lot of times it makes more sense for the guitar to be the most active comp or more of the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so you have to kind of balance for styles a little bit. But I would, uh, uh, I'm going to ask Dan to play what we call the Freddie Green style. This is going to work in a in a a. a Swing context, not not otherwise. But Freddie Green was the guitarist that played with the Count Basie Orchestra, mm -hmm. and there were some things about this that you need to know. Freddie Green was never amplified. He played a guitar like this. This is called a hollow. I, I didn't ever mention this. We didn't really get into the guitar, but this is the kind of guitar you want in your jazz band. Really, it's a hollow body guitar. There's a semi hollow. It's hollow. Yeah, it, it looked hollow to me. It's a hollow hollow body guitar. It's got F holes, there's resonance coming from there. There's a certain amount of sound that's coming from that instrument without any amplification. This is with no amplification. Yeah. 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 This is a much gonna be a much more of the jazz sound you want in a in a big band. And so hopefully we've got a guy that's got this kind of guitar. Uh, anyway. Freddie Green never used an amplifier. He used a hollow body guitar like this, and he never played harmonically uh, difficult. He, he would only play root, third, seventh, sometimes only the third and the seventh, sometimes he'd only play one note. And basically, he did rhythm guitar, and that means that uh, Dan's going to play on every beat. He's going to play chord notes, bing, 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 uh, which isn't going to get in the way too much if Sam's an active comper, you see. He can be actively comping rhythmically and so on. And here we're just got the quarter note pulse happening, so it's not a conflict. Let's try that. So let's play mostly unamplified, but uh, in, in a real in a high school situation these days, you may not get away with that completely. You might have to have just a little amplification, but uh, it's not uncommon for me to say to the guitarist in my band, you're too loud. Turn down. That you're trying to do the Freddie Green style, and it's like jack, jack, jack. You don't want that. You couldn't even hear Freddie Green a lot of the time. But when he quit playing, you say, "What changed? What's missing?" You know. And in fact, when he died, they auditioned a lot of different guitarists for the Count Basie band, and nobody could do quite what Freddie did. And they decided to go without guitar from now on. <laughs> so this is not just an easy thing to duplicate. <laughs> but let's try it. Okay. So now we're using active comping on the piano, Freddie Green style on the guitar. Two, and one, two, three, and. Yeah, 
see this doesn't get in the way of the, of the piano. Uh, can you hear it out there? I could when I caught it in front of you. When I was back here, I was like, mm, maybe I need to have you put a little lamp on it just a little bit. But put just a little more amplification on it just for a second. Let's hear what that sounds like. Right. Like you want too much or just... No, just a little bit. Well, no, just a little bit first. Yeah. Then we'll do too much. It's hard, to, hard for me to gauge. The yeah. Yes. All right, two. Just a little ways. Two, yeah. three, and... Okay, so that's, that's probably reasonable right there. Now play definitely too loud. <laughs> Don't go too crazy. Two, one, two, three, and... Okay. Don't go quite that much. Little things make a big difference. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, two, three, and... Yeah, that was pushing it a little bit. A minute ago, you could tell what a mess that would be if it was too loud all the time. Have to be really careful with using that. There's a couple more of the things you need to know about guitar. Dan is not going down, up, down, up, down, up. He's using only down strokes. Is that true? Yeah. I wasn't watching you very much, but yeah. <laughs> and sh he should be using just down strokes. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do what we call strumming. It's true here when I play. Yeah. <laughs> I have played up strokes in my life. Well, it depends on what style. Depends on if you, you're in the country band, yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah, and for something like that, yeah, absolutely. Different styles. But for what we're talking about in the swing style, we really only want the downbeat. Downstroke, I mean, downstroke, not the upstroke. Yeah. And uh, there's going to be a little more emphasis on two and four, like we were talking about a minute ago. Can you demonstrate that, Dan? Yeah. With like the Freddie Green thing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So when he's using the little notes, he does an upstroke on those ones. Yes. Uh, the Freddie Green style wouldn't probably do that really. It'd be a bit more. Yeah. Um, yeah, some people do it. But um, the other thing, I mean, there's lots of different, you can say Freddie Green and means slightly yeah. different things sometimes. Yeah. Like sometimes it, it can be pretty straight where they're yeah. not really a different emphasis. Uh -huh. um, but sometimes Okay, so so uh, there's a few things that you need to know about the guitar itself, or the instrument itself. Now, there's a lot of stuff on this in my book. Uh, and, and by the way, the, there's a reference to the Freddie Green. There's a thing called freddiegreen.org where you can find out a lot more about this and get some of the voicings and stuff. There, there's some real disciples out there that keep this going. Yeah. Uh, okay, now there's three ways we've talked about so far of dealing with the piano versus a guitar. The piano is active, the guitar is not, or one's playing, the other one's not or Freddie Green style active comping. There's another way that you can still deal with this. Uh, and it's not uncommon, for example, to have the guitar, instead of comping, the guitar might actually double the melody. Uh, he might be doubling the lead alto on a sax solo and playing the lead alto melody with the lead alto. That's actually orchestrated that way sometimes. But you could also orchestrate it that way yourself. <laughs> And it's not also uncommon for the guitar to maybe play the melody line with the lead trumpet in the shout chorus. And so, so where the guitar doesn't just actively comp the whole time, but he saves himself and does more melodic things that complement with the band. Uh, so there's an, and everything we're saying about the guitar could also be said about the vibes. If you have a vibraphone in here, he, the same things can happen. The vibe can be a, a passive comp or an active comp. The vibe can sit out. The vibe, well, the vibe doesn't do the Freddie Green style, but, but he, I mean, he could do the similar style. As, we wouldn't call it Freddie Green style, but he could play kind of a similar kind of thing softly. And also the vibe can double melodies. Uh, when we were, last time we did Channel One Suite, Buddy Rich, I didn't really have a lead trumpet player that was making it 
all the way out of that chart. Uh, some wow stuff. And I, I had the vibes and the guitar doubling that line and had the trumpet player down an octave and he didn't tell he wasn't playing it up an octave that well. <laughs> that well. <laughs> Cause it's screaming trumpet stuff, you know. <laughs> It kind of worked, I think. <laughs> so we really do have to be sensitive to this issue, and I and I would say that I've I've seen adjudicating out there. I've seen some things. I, I mean, I remember one band that came in, and they had two kids sitting at the piano, and then they had two guitar players, and they had a vibes player, and everybody was comping full bore all the time. Yeah. It's pretty ugly. <laughs> two piano players on the same piano. I've also seen this. Two rhythm sections, <laughs> pianos on the opposite sides of the band, bass players on the opposite of the band, trying to play the same as each other. That's asking for trouble. <laughs> that was a junior high, and I, under I understand trying to keep everybody involved. <laughs> but I, I wouldn't perform that way, honestly. <laughs> it kind of just takes away from the whole idea of what it is. So it? <laughs> anyway. Uh, so let's, let's do a little bit more with playing together. I, I think one thing to point out is that the piano and the guitar can't play, they can play exactly the same as each other. Sometimes we'll have written figures, and the piano and guitar have to play exactly the same as each other. The problem is when they play kind of the same as each other. You know, that doesn't work. You can't play kind of the same. You either play exactly the same or completely different. You never play sort of the same. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where the issues come in. I actually brought a chart because I wanted to kind of show that, that there are times when the rhythm section needs to play rhythms together. Let's see, we don't have enough music stand. Well, yes, we do. We got plenty, okay. Um, I made you some big copies, man. This chart also has a vibes part, which you notice the vibes part is written melodically, so that there's not comping happening, even though we don't have a, a vibes player here. What am I missing? No, I gave you to. Okay, I got it. Let's pass. Let's pass this chart. Zach, you want to help me with it? Yeah. like it's still red, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, like everything's still working. For some reason I can't find the bass part on this one. Just for a minute. I'm really looking at these rhythms right here for that chart. And this melodic stuff right at the front up here is all we're going to do, I think. So let's let's go uh, with Dreamsville for a second, and just play at the top of the chart. F sharp D B flat. B, B flat, D, F sharp, D, B flat. Oh, it's F sharp? This, this, this one. Oh. B flat, F sharp, D. Oh. So it's augmented. Oh, it's D natural. 
No, it's a B flat. The B flat's on the key signature. Yeah. Right, yeah, but the, the, yeah. the D's natural. Yeah, sorry, not the D, not the D. Sorry. Oh, D natural, yeah, okay. Are you able to get two more majors? G, D, G. G, D, G, F, C. Uh-huh. And then E flat, B flat, E flat. D flat, B flat, G flat. B flat, G flat. Let's just see if we can do it. Yeah, play what you have written. All right, here's the very beginning. This is a ballad, so it's straight eighth notes. This is a straight eighth note ballad. So we're going to play those eighth notes not swung. All right, one, two, three, four. Now, and one. One. B flat. E flat, B flat, E flat. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's do it one more time. Pretty good. Last note's an F when we resolve. That's as far as we're going to go. But what I want to illustrate here <clears throat> is that sometimes the piano and guitar play exactly the same as thing as each other. They're written to do this. And then we hope we play in tune. <laughs> right, here we go, one more time. Two. So there's a whole measure to rest. Two, three, and this is just drums. Now from here, we're going to be probably, there's a, there's a little more written stuff here and there, but we're going to be doing a little more regular comping and stuff uh, after that. But we'll have written figures where we actually do want to play exactly the same as each other. That's not a problem. Uh, let's do one more thing. We're going to go to the last part of the other chart. <clears throat> and what if we start at 47, which is right here. Same chart. E flat 7, B flat 7, 2, 5, 1, and B flat. Actually, let's start at 39. 3, and... So sometimes we have written figures in the rhythm section, and we have to play them rhythmically the same as the horns would, with the same kind of swing feel. And see, we're going in and out there, so we got written figures, then we got comping, and then we got rhythm figures, and we got comping. That's not uncommon in the rhythm section to have to do that kind of stuff. <clears throat>